I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, some new developments in lighting. One of the things that we have used for years is the old incandescent light bulb. But today I want to talk to you about some light emitting diodes, or LEDs. They come in various different colors depending upon chemical composition. They range from red to orange to yellow to green to blue. If we take gallium, arsenic, and a little bit of phosphorus, we get a red LED. If we take gallium, arsenic, and even more phosphorus, we get an orange LED. If we take gallium, arsenic, and still more phosphorus, we get a yellow LED. And finally, if we take gallium and phosphorus only, we get a yellow-green LED. If we then take gallium and nitrogen with a little bit of the element indium here, we get a blue LED. One of the more common applications of light-emitting diodes is in traffic lights. There are still plenty of traffic lights like our green here that have incandescent light bulbs still supplying the energy. But those are very high wattage light bulbs, typically 135 watts, and they draw a lot of power. On the other hand, our LED traffic lights like the yellow seen here and the red above are very low wattage, anywhere from 6 to 15 watts of power. So there are tremendous savings in electrical energy. The state of California about five years ago understood that they could save a lot of energy if they would change out their traffic lights to light emitting diodes. They were having blackouts everywhere, but with the changing out of 140,000 traffic lights throughout the state, they avoided building two new power plants and solved some of the blackout problems. Now another issue with traffic lights is catastrophic failure. With the incandescent light bulb, if the filament breaks for any reason, that particular segment is no longer visible. With the LEDs, you can have multiple LEDs non-functioning, and yet the element still works as good as it did before. The state of Oregon, several years ago, took a 9 millimeter handgun, pointed it at a LED traffic light, shot out over a hundred of the LEDs, and the traffic light still functioned. One bullet at an incandescent light bulb is going to render it totally useless. You may notice around Madison that there are numerous traffic lights that will have small areas that are not lighting up. Those are due to problems with the circuitry, but the traffic light still functions. Now with your incandescent light bulb, to avoid that catastrophic failure situation, the red bulbs are changed out once a year. Several years ago, the city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, actually did a study and concluded that changing out the incandescent light bulbs at one intersection cost about $250 each year. So not only do you have energy savings, but you have tremendous savings in maintenance expenses as the LED traffic lights are expected to work for a approximate 100,000 hours. To illustrate the reason 
that the LED traffic lights are so much better. I am using a reverse of LED to measure the spectrum of the light being emitted by the traffic light. In this technology, we're actually using diodes to detect the presence of light instead of using diodes to emit light. When I point the fiber optic at the red LED, we get a very narrow peak for the energy. When I do the same with the yellow, again, we get a very narrow peak for the energy. But when we go to the incandescent light bulb, we see a lot of different peaks. And with the filter in place, all of the light that uh, is not going to appear green to the human eye gets filtered out by the green filter. Here you see the spectrum of the incandescent light bulb without the filter. Another interesting application of LEDs is in ballpoint pens that light up. Here we see a ballpoint pen that has both a red, a green, and a blue LED chip. And as the microcomputer built into the pen tells it the red, the green, the blue light up, then combinations of red and green, green and blue, and red and blue light up, and then all three of them come on at the same time. Another application of light emitting diodes is found in yet another ballpoint pen. This one I use routinely in class Hopefully as it contains it its own LED laser pointer. But it also has a blue LED that you can use. There are lots of novel applications of light emitting diode technology. One of the older versions is this so-called replacement for an incandescent light bulb. It screws into a regular socket, just like an ordinary incandescent, but it has hundreds of LEDs to give off its light. It's not overly bright, however. There are newer versions that have fewer LEDs that give off much brighter light as the power of a light emitting diode has greatly increased over the years. Here is an illustration of a flashlight with no batteries. In the center you see a coil of copper wire and the silver devices there are magnets. Now the next thing that they came up with is some small flashlights that are battery powered. This one I carry in my pants pocket all the time and you simply turn the lens to turn it on. I have had this flashlight for four years. I use it almost daily and it is on its own its second set of batteries. More recently they have come out with what looks like an ordinary mag light, but it has an incon has in place of the incandescent light bulb an LED. Another version of the flashlight is this. It is currently turned on. You don't see it because the capacitor has run down. So let's crank up some energy. The more you crank it, the more that it stays on and it has three LEDs or one LED. Another recent application is in battery powered 
LED holiday lights. This particular string is some eight feet long. One of the more recent developments in light emitting diodes is putting more than one chip in the same package. Here we see the LED itself and it has two blues, a red and a green. The two blues are necessary because when this particular LED was manufactured, the strength of light coming from the blue was not as strong. Now, I'm going to turn on my tricolor mixer and first turn on the blue chip, then the green chip, and last the red chip. Now our goal in creating this product was to be able to mix in two or all three colors in varying amounts and with all three create white light. Another very common application of light emitting diodes that more of you are probably familiar with, except for the possibility of the traffic light, is the LED pixel. These little blocks are found in all major sporting arenas today, and using a computer, instead of the tricolor mixer shown here, you can turn on blue, you can turn on green, or you can turn on red light, and by changing the intensity of the individual colors, the computer can actually generate a full spectrum of colors. In addition to sporting arenas, this technology is used in New York City on Times Square. Light emitting diodes have found many applications. Some of the first that the general public noticed were the LED traffic lights. About the same time, some of the automobiles started having LED tail lights. They are quite common now. Big trucks, buses, all have lots of LEDs now. They are being used in aircraft. The next generation of Boeing aircraft will have all of the lighting internal to the airplane as light emitting diodes. Why? They are lightweight. They save energy. They don't require maintenance. All of these factors have influenced their applications and they're even coming into the home. It is estimated in the next 10 years that homes will be built that will have lighting that will exist for the next 100 years.